Hey, Oakham okay, students, Ben Asman here. It's time for us to make semesters. Let's get to it. Fisher esterification. It's the classic way of making a nester. And when I say classic, I mean classic. Try 1895 classic. Here's the overall idea. You're going to take a carboxylic acid and then you're going to take an alcohol, boil them together, and you're going to get yourself your ester. The carbonyl O carbon. Our carboxylic acid today is lauric acid. It's a 12 carbon fatty acid come to coconut oil. If we look at the overall reaction, we might anticipate that it's going to be straightforward. The alcohol oxygen is a nucleophile. The carbonyl carbon is an electrophile. Have the nucleophile attack the electrophile, right? Wrong. Turns out alcohols are pretty weak-ass nucleophiles, and carboxylic acids are pretty lame electrophiles, too. So how do we get around this? A catalyst. Something to make one of our two compounds do their job a little better. For us today, it's going to be acid in the form of hydrochloric acid. Let's take a look at how that works. In this case, the carbonyl oxygen will pick up a proton. This will give us a charged intermediate, which is a far more powerful electrophile. When we bring back the alcohol, we can see that now it can undergo nucleophilic attack. Hooray, it's all solved now. We'll just add some aqueous hydrochloric acid and we'll be perfect. Yeah, that doesn't work. Why? Because this is an equilibrium reaction. And equilibrium reactions are governed by Le Chatelier's principle, this guy. He's kind of a badass of chemistry. His principle is best demonstrated by a U-tube. No, not that U-tube, a tube shaped like a U, full of water. If I added a bunch of water to one side, what would happen to the water on the other side? No, seriously, would it go up, go down, stay the same? What's your guess? If you said go up, congratulations, the money you spent on your education didn't fail you. Okay, and what happens to the right side? Goes down. To what point? Until it finds a new equilibrium. The same kind of logic can be applied to your reaction. And there's our problem. Water is one of our products. If we use aqueous hydrochloric acid, we'll be adding water, pushing the entire reaction back towards the reactants. We get around this by making our own very dry hydrochloric acid. That's the first reaction at the top of your procedure. This reaction is going to be done in suto, in the same pot as our main reaction. It starts off with ethanol, like the other reaction, which is just as bad a nucleophile as it was before. However, acetyl chloride is an immensely powerful electrophile. So powerful, in fact, that you're not allowed to touch it. I have to do it for you, or the other instructor. And don't worry about that byproduct. That's just ethyl acetate. It's a solvent. It will boil off the same time you boil off all the ethanol. Back to the main reaction. We already have ethanol doing double duty twice as a nucleophile, but now we're having it do triple duty. In order for this reaction to work even better, we're using it as a solvent. This puts a lot of stuff on the reactant side, which just like that YouTube pushes it over towards the product. When you're setting up the apparatus today, you're going to want to connect the conical vial to the water-cooled reflux condenser. For this, you'll need the thick O-ring. You want to take the water-cooled reflux condenser, add the cap with a hole, and only then place the O-ring on it. You want to make sure you get it past that little bit of glass rim right there. Once you have it on, you can connect the water in through the bottom, out through the top. Adding a clamp as a weight to the end of your out hose will make sure that it doesn't spray everywhere. And testing your setup before you get your chemicals will make sure that if it does spray anywhere, your compound doesn't get ruined. All you need for your water flow is just a little bit of a drip. Remember, we do live in a drought-stricken state. Add to this your calcium chloride drying tube using a K-clamp to hold it into place. Remember, K-clamps have a wide side and a narrow side. Wide side goes on the bottom piece, narrow side goes on the top piece. If you don't remember how to make a drying tube, I'll leave a link in the description below. Before I measure out my lauric acid, I'm going to put in my spin vane. That's a little triangle spinner right here. You always want to have it point down with the little knobs up top. Now, in case you haven't seen it before, the easiest way to measure out an exact small amount of powder is to hold the container right above the flask and scrape it out using a spatula. Just like this. Once you've reached your target amount, make sure to write it down before you forget. Next up is the ethanol. But then you want to cap it so moisture doesn't get in while you're going to wait for the instructor to come and add the acetyl chloride. The moment it stops bubbling, you want to connect it to your apparatus and get the reaction started. Two main tips here. One, you want to make sure that it's super tight so it can't fall and that nothing can leak out. And two, you want to get this as deep in the sand bath as you possibly can. And as always, if you can't stir, you want it to stir and you want it to stir as fast as you can. Start your timer when you can see it refluxing. The easiest point is usually right here at the junction where you can see the drips falling down. While that's cooking, you want to make sure that you start making your column. You'll need it to purify your crude product later. To make your column, load a piece of cotton into your pasta pipette. You can use a steel rod to tamp it in, but not too tight. Now this is a true chromatography column. 
one that separates based on polarity, not just a drawing column like we use in other experiments. That means we're using silica gel, but make sure you work with this in the hood. You don't want to breathe it in. It can cause a terrible disorder called silicosis. You're going to need about two fingers worth. For ease of use, you can stick this through a split cork. That way you can quickly mount it. Once your time is up, you're going to pull out your entire apparatus. Let it cool just cool enough so you can handle it. And then take it, put it in the sand bath, open to evaporate off the ethanol. While that's happening, I'm preparing a pre-weighed vial. I'm going to use this to put the filtrate from the column in. Once the volume of your solution reaches somewhere between 0.3 milliliters and 1 milliliter, you know you've boiled off enough of the ethanol. Remove your sand bath and clamp your vial so it can stir, but it's not touching. We're now going to do a really tiny extraction using aqueous bicarb and diethyl ether. Remember that water is more dense than diethyl ether, so it will be on the bottom. We want to remove the aqueous layer. It's junk. Notice I place the pipette all the way to the bottom, then press the plunger to evacuate the air, and then slowly suck it up. And then we're going to wash the organic with some more aqueous bicarbonate. If you can't get it to stir fast enough for it to mix, you can always pipette up and down a few times. Then let it settle and separate before removing the aqueous layer altogether. Don't remove all of it. If you have a little bit left over, that's okay. We're going to use some drying agent, but you don't want to remove any of the organic layer. That you want to leave. Our drying agent today is sodium sulfate. You only need a little bit, just to soak up whatever water is remaining. Now you need to moisten the column. Otherwise, the chromatography does not work quite as well. You're going to run some ether through it a few times. You can use some pressurized air to make it go a little faster. But you don't need to keep this first dose of ether. Once your column is nice and moist, you can add your compound to it. Make sure you also rinse your drying agent with some diethyl ether and pass that through the column as well. Once you pass a few more mils of ether through, you're going to take that vial, you're going to let it evaporate in your drawer, and walk away. Because you're done. <laughs>